Hi everybody, it's Chrissy from Knit in the Heights. This is a knitting podcast coming to you from New York City and it is April 30th. So this is actually my May podcast um, where we talk about all the crafting I've done in the previous month. So welcome to my channel. If you, this is your first time viewing, um, welcome back. If you are a long time viewer, it's nice to see everybody back here today. Uh, so today, today's podcast will be potentially a pretty short one. Um, I was really monogamous for the majority of the month of April, working primarily on one project. And then towards the end of the month, I ended up working on two other projects that I'll catch you up on. So um, just as a reminder, I am this year really trying to knit my whips, my works in progress, and I'm making some progress on that for sure. So let's start by catching you up on where I am on one of my um, works in progress that I've been working on. This is the Rocket Tea by Tannis Lavelli. Um, I have been working on this for the past, since like, November, I think, but November, October. Um, and it's a short sleeve tee and here it is. So I have made some progress. I put a stitch marker, which is up here to show how much progress I made since the last podcast. What I found really interesting about this was I do enjoy knitting on it. It's a pretty plain knit at this point. I'm just uh, knitting straight down the body till I get to the right um, inches. It uh, became a little bit tedious because it was so plain. <laughs> it was, you know, it was just knit in the round, which was great for watching TV, but even then I was finding myself getting kind of bored with it. So um, I did quite a bit. Um, each of these stripes is about an inch. So one, two, three, four, about five inches. I knit around and I am not a small person circumference wise. So that was a lot. Um, the yarn that I'm using is the, the pink one is a Knit Picks lace weight, 100% silk. Um, and it's the Innocence colorway in that 100% lace weight. And then the gray is a fingering weight by um, Murky Depths, who is a New York dyer in her colorway Naker. And the composition of that colorway is it's merino wool, cashmere, and silk. It is super soft. It is gonna be a great summer tea when it's done. Um, I wanna say I have something like seven or eight more inches to the body. So I would say sometime in June, if I keep up the same kind of pace, I will probably. I'll finish it then. I might get a little more in um, on this because I'm gonna need some plain knitting coming up. I am going on a trip and so some plain knitting is needed for the train ride because it's quite a long trade ride. I'll talk about that at the end of the at the end of our knitting time together. So yeah, so this is making progress. It's coming along. But I literally found myself putting it down after working on it for a half an hour and just ignoring it and I but I still wanted to knit. So I decided to actually cast something on. So in my last podcast, I had talked about casting on um, some of the projects that I was kind of dream knitting. And I had yarn from leftovers set aside to start some socks. And so I picked one of those up and I said, you know, cause you can never have enough socks. And I decided to actually start a new pair of socks. And within a week, I knit the first sock. So let me show you that. So here is one of my Franken socks. This is one of my favorite ways to use up scrap yarn. So this is where I take leftovers and I stripe it in interesting combinations and try to use as much of the yarn as possible. So if you see, it is a vanilla sock. Um, I do 64 stitches on a 1.5 size US needle, a US size 1.5 needle. Um, I use Chagos and their DPNs, metal DPNs. So I did a one by one twisted rib. Then I did 10 rows of the first color or the primary color, which is a homespun house in the colorway. This was a, a special little house on the prairie club colorway called on the shores of Silver Lake. 
Um, so I did 10 rows of that. And then I had leftovers. And I um, both of these were used in my So Faded sweater I just finished uh, in the autumn, early autumn. So one of them is from Craft House Magic. Um, that's the purple right there. It's kind of like a dusky purple. Can't remember the colorway. Um, the other one is Pink Peony, and that is from Chelsea Lux Yarns. The I did use a 20 gram mini that I had from some, I don't know, some historic <laughs> like uh, advent calendar, or it was either an advent calendar or just a mini I bought, but I think it was from an advent calendar. I'm thinking it was potentially the 20... Night, 2020, 2019, 2019, um, dandelion and dogwood advent cal calendar. If it was, because I, I think that makes sense of when I would have had it, but it's like a, it's a, it's like a really pale pink with silver Stellina sparkle. And then I did, so then, so I did 10, 10 rows, then six and six, and then I believe 10 and then I went into a slip stitch heel with a Dutch heel turn, which is kind of the square one. Um, and then I needed to knit, I need to knit 60 rounds before I get into the toe. And I wanted to knit as much as possible, like try to get as much yardage out of this main color. And so I had already split the yarn I had for the homespun house eons ago into two even balls. They were about, mm, I want to say 20 grams. So I knit, 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 knit until I knew I was going to be real close. So then it was six and six again. And what I did is I mirrored the stripes and then it ended up being nine. I was so close at the end. There's nine stripes of yarn there. I cannot remember how long from here to here it was, but it ends up being uh, 60. I added one plain row on the toe um, and I'm just going to cross my fingers and on my toes and my eyes um, to make sure that on the second sock, I have enough of this sparkle yarn left. But yeah, very, very happy with this sock. Um, one thing, one note that I had about the Homespun House, this particular skein, I have had Molly's yarn many, many times. And this particular yarn, when I knit another pair of socks with it, I had sent it away um, to the laundromat to be clean. This is when I, I think it was when I was living in my old apartment and I, my washer dryer thing broke and I had to send away laundry uh, to get clean. And I think they washed it on high and they actually felted the sock. It ended up being way too tight. So I'm gonna have to be careful with this sock. I tend to, wash my clothes now myself and I tend to wash everything on cold just generally um, because I do like large loads um, of laundry. Um, so I'll just have to take care with this that I don't accidentally felt it because um, this the sock yarn in particular has felt it. It had, did shrink. Um, right now Gabe can fit into those socks <laughs> so he's using those socks. So now I get my own. So very happy with this. I did cast on my second sock. Um, it is literally cast on just one row. Okay, so that's where I am with that sock. Now, now I need to talk about this next project. Now I had no intention of picking this project up for a long time, actually. But, you know, sometimes you get a hankering to do something. Um, I'm happy I picked it up. I am sad of what has happened um, since. So I picked back up my Battenberg blanket, which I have been working on for the past several years. And one of the challenges I have with crochet is that at times when I do crochet, I have had issues with shoulder pain um, and with, with repetitive stress and injury. I don't have that with crochet. I mean, not with crochet. I don't have that with, with knitting at all. Like I don't have any issues, but I have historically had issues with crochet. I think it's because it's a one-sided kind of motion. It is repetitive. It mimics some of the same issues I had with my viola playing um, as well. So I, yeah, so um, basically what has happened is I crocheted for one day, 
for probably two and a half hours with breaks. And then yesterday I crocheted again for about two and a half hours. And at the end of that two and a half hours, I was miserable. <laughs> like all of a sudden this sudden pain came out of nowhere um, to the point where it was hard to sleep. I had to take painkillers. I never take painkillers. Like that's real rare for me. So, um, and I, it's been hard to like lifting my arm to here hurts slightly. It's getting better. I will say it's getting better, but it's that repetitive motion. Um, and I think it's activating some of the same issues I used to have with playing my viola. Um, I haven't had issues playing my viola, but combining playing my viola with crochet, yes, I 100% had issues when I was doing that. But that's one of the reasons I moved primarily to knitting is because I had these issues. Now, I have crocheted in the past, but I didn't try to do a project for a very, very long time. Um, and it is enough of a different motion that I think I just, I did something. So anyway, it's getting better. <laughs> I may have to take a night or two away from any crafting just to let it heal. Although I'm really hankering. I wish I could crochet on this. I mean, it really is getting beautiful. <sighs> so I'm a little bit frustrated. Anyway, so I, a while, like years ago, filled this bag full of like the colorful squares. So I have plenty, I have a lot of colorful squares. And what I'm doing at this point is I'm crocheting mostly the white squares and connecting them to the colorful squares. So what I did is as I completed a square and connected it to the blanket, I put a stitch marker on it so we would know how much I achieved. So I'll, call, I'll count the white ones um, and not the colored ones because that'll give you an idea of how much I put on in two days. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Looks like I put on nine squares in two days, which isn't like too much, but it really does do something to the blanket. I guess the question I have for myself and for the world is, is this worth it? <laughs> is it worth the pain? Um, no, it's definitely not worth the pain. Uh, is it something that should I just, you know, plan to once my shoulder heals? Like put on like every week, maybe put on a couple of squares and then put it away. That might be possible because I don't think the injury would reoccur if I did just like two squares. Um, a week. I think it's because I did nine squares in two days, which is a lot. Um, it takes me to do one of these squares and connect it. You know, it's like about, I don't know, 20 minutes or something. Part of it was reteaching myself. Like the first day I had to reteach myself the pattern and how you connect the squares and all that jazz. But it really is so pretty. <laughs> It really is so pretty and it's such a beautiful way to use up minis and a beautiful way to use up scraps. In fact, I was talking to my friend Josh, who many of you have seen on the podcast before. He's doing great. He's working away at his whips right now and he's about to start some new things because he's about to cast some things off soon. Um, we were talking, he was like, oh my gosh, you, you've got to talk about the different ways you use scraps. And so some of my favorite ways are like the Franken socks. This is another beautiful way to use up scraps. I, th I think that my biggest challenge with this really is the fact that it's causing me pain. If crochet didn't cause me pain, I would do it a lot more often. It, for me, it is a se second nature because I started as a crocheter and then went to knitting. But yeah, I can't force myself to do something if I'm in pain. I mean, it's like the kind of pain that actually wakes you up. Like I couldn't get comfortable at all last night. So that's a bummer, but on the you know plus side, it really is pretty. So yeah, I, I think I'm gonna put this back away for the week, let myself heal. And then down the line, I will put on, I would just have to put, I might have to write something down and put it in the bag saying, you are only allowed to do this much per day. Uh, that might be the only way to do this, <laughs> to be able to continue with this and get it finished. Cause it is really pretty. I mean, come on, you guys, this is so pretty. All right, so that's what I've been working on. So this, oh, by the way, if you don't know the Battenberg blanket design, it is by um, Sandra Paul at Cherry Heart. Um, super simple, super, super simple. 
but super effective. And one of the things I love the most about it is actually that the holes kind of make it look like an argyle pattern. I just love how that looks. It's not like the other granny squares that are a little bit holier. So yeah, it's pretty cool. So that's it for my crafty content today. So uh, just a real brief what's coming up in May. I am going to Baltimore. I have been asked by a music education organization in Baltimore if I would come and be part of an evaluation team to give that program some feedback. And that'll be, ex you know, absolutely so much fun. Um, one of my colleagues is the artistic director of that program who, and he, he's like one of my favorite people in the, on the planet. Like I really dig his, just the way he thinks about music education and what's important and you know, the change it can make in people's lives. And so we're kind of kindred spirits in that way. And I always love just hanging with him cause he's super fun. And you know, I learn a lot from him and from working with him. And I know that, um, like he's learned a, a lot about like what I do. He's a brass player, I'm a string player. So we end up learning from each other in really cool ways. And it's just nice part being part of a community. So anyway, I'm gonna go down there. Um, that's on May, the weekend of May the 10th and 11th. And so it'll be nice to get out of the city. Um, Gabriel's father is supposed to come and stay with him. Um, so it'll be great for Gabe to spend some good quality time with his dad. Um, then I, oh, I'm just like, chugging along at work, writing lots of grants. Um, but I'm gonna insert some footage of things that have happened in April, um, some places we've gone, some performances. So I hope you enjoy. I'd love to hear how all of you are doing with your crocheting and crafting and all of that. So if you wanna pop down below, that'd be great. Thank you so much for joining me. See you next time, bye. <laughs>
take some. And what did you get? Summer shake. Yeah. Fine. What do you think of Shake Shack? It's so junk. I finally found you, my missing cousin. 